Welcome back to Mog Monday and part one of Traumatina modification. Today we're modifying the handle. Go from a stock handle to a customized handle with lanyard hole. So stick around. here in the workshop I got a little electric heater running so if you hear a little humming sound in the background that's what it is so take that label off we'll leave it in the sheath while we do this just to help prevent me from accidentally hurting myself and I want to try to get as dead center as possible. Oh, those don't seem to be very hard. Mm, okay. Let me. I'm gonna pause this. Go grab a drill bit for my drill here, or we might. You know what? Let's go use the uh, drill press, shall we? The drill press. We are set up. We have an eighth-inch drill bit, and we're gonna try to drill this straight through. Now you can use a hand drill to do this. Oh wow, that's really soft. These rivets... Yeah, it's some kind of uh, aluminum. It's not very hard at all. Okay, this might be easier than I thought to get one of these drilled out. Here, I was expecting something really hard. Okay, so we have that drilled out, and the drill bit, of course, is loaded. You always want to start with a small drill bit when doing something like this, like an eighth inch. I'm sorry to my uh, viewers and lands that do the metric system. If I remember, I will try to do conversions in metric down there. You know what? Let me get that out of there because I need to go up to a bigger drill bit. Yeah, it's stuck in there pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna step up to a little bit bigger drill bit. And we're just gonna try to get enough of this rivet out to where I can knock it out with a punch and the rivet itself is now spinning and there we go that is the end of that rivet look at that so you can see the uh, rest of the rivet in there now we're gonna go back over to the vise and we're gonna try to get the rest of this out okay so Got to get the rest of that rivet out. I'm just using a uh, old triangular file, but I couldn't find a punch. Of course, you know, the one tool I want, I can't find, so the name of the game is Improvise, Improvise, Improvise. And that's wanting to come out. Let's see if I got a pair of needle nose or other pliers see if I can get a grip on that <clears throat> now I broke a piece of it off I just got to get the rest of it out ah there we go look at that see got it right there grab it with the pliers Ah, there we go. That's what's left of the rivet. It's some kind of aluminum or an aluminum alloy because it's not it's not very heavy. But I guess that makes sense if you used uh, 
an iron or steel, it would probably rust in the rainforest. Okay, so there's our hole. Now we gotta go back to the drill press and I wanna bore this out a little bit bigger. Um, I'm not gonna bore you by taking you back to the drill press for this. I think you can imagine what it looks like. So I'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step. I drilled it out and I also countersunk these holes a little bit, okay? And what I'm gonna use to make a tubular rivet is I got some, uh, I believe this is quarter inch tubular uh, copper. And I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna shape it, fit it, fit it in here. See, I drilled the hole just to where that fits. But uh, to shape this, I do have a tool here. And it's this guy. We're gonna try using this heavy duty uh, flaring tool for pipe. And we're gonna try, we're gonna see how it works. And then we're gonna set it with a hammer. I know I'm kind of babbling, but uh, I'm kind of in my zone right now. I've kind of had a, a crummy day today, so I'm trying to make the best of it and make a decent video for y'all. All right. So. Okay. Yeah, these are pretty handy tools, but you might not have one unless you're a, a plumber or a pipe fitter. I merely got one because years ago, when I was buying a lot of tools, I had, uh, had a coupon for 50% off any plumbing tool a long time ago. And I, uh, I purchased this and I'm really happy I did because I've used it in a lot of projects. Okay, so we have our pipe in here. We have it set up. I have this all tightened down. And I'm gonna try flaring. I might have to back that out a little bit first. Yeah, I think I got it too high up in there. So we'll try backing that down okay <clears throat> there we go so there it is in there I'm gonna try flaring the one end and this just gives us a starting point ooh that flared hugely okay let's pop that all all apart let's get that out of there so you can see it flared it pretty dang good. Let's see what happens when we, whoops, getting hung up on cords and stuff around here. So there it is in the handle. Now I would need to cut my side here, leaving enough material to flare the other side. And then I'm gonna use a hammer and we're going to try to set these and that will, whoa just drop the sheath and that will be our tubular rivet that we can run a uh, lanyard through so whew, got cords and stuff everywhere so i'm going to shut the camera off for a minute okay i have it cut to length i sanded the end a little bit now we're going to see if we can uh, get this to work. So that's about where I'd want it. Let's see here. I'm struggling to keep you all in frame as I do this. This is not easy. So what I need now is I need something that is bigger than this hole and is the appropriate shape that I can tap this out with that I can flare it. So, let me see what I can find here in the workshop and I'll bring you back when I find something. For a little bit of looking, I have this little jeweler's hammer that's kinda got a ball peen on one side. And I got another hammer here 
So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to put this ball peen on here and we're going to look at all that dust <laughs> and we're going to lightly tap it and try to set that and of course it wants to wants to do its own thing I need to keep that flat and it keeps shifting on me oh, getting there oh, look at that almost got it <laughs> yeah buddy look at that oh sorry I was out of camera look at that now I just need to touch up the other side and uh, yeah look at that looks looks pretty good oh sorry I'm always out of camera guys it's not easy for me in this workshop look at that let me turn off the ring you know I'm getting more glare from that ring light hey look at that see and that's recessed enough to where it's not going to be an issue and I can run a lanyard I can run paracord through that but one thing I do want to do I want to see if I can find I do want to touch it up a little bit more so let me dig around here find some tools and I'll bring you back here in a minute so I have these uh, doming punches I have a set of them because I used to do jewelry and I'm just gonna this one just starts to fit in here ah, bloody camera work okay you know applications for a cameraman or woman are open just saying so you can see that barely fits I'm gonna use this to kind of swell the inner part of this Let me turn that back on there we go I'm gonna use that to swell the inside of this a little bit shouldn't use a hard hammer like that on these but there we go look went all the way down in there pull it out oh yeah it looks a lot better do the other side I know not everybody has the same tools I have I have quite an eclectic mix of tools but uh, be creative maybe even make something on a bench grinder to do stuff like this but there we go now before anybody says oh that's too soft to be a rivet blah 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 well these right here are aluminum and that's pretty dang soft the way they drilled they drilled like butter so I think that's just fine because when I'm holding the machete you can see now I can do a lanyard and I can do my uh, lanyard trick where I lock it down on my hand now we're gonna profile and sand this handle for this next step I have an inch by 30 uh, belt sander here I'm gonna use that to do most of the profiling on the handle I also have this uh, old school black and decker drill which still works really good and I've got these flat discs for the drill this is 80 grit and this one is 320 and surprisingly hey look at that made in England ain't that cool so thank you England you make a decent product because I've used these many times and we're going to use that to touch up the handle so I'm going to show you a little bit of this but not very much because it's going to kick up a ton of sawdust it's very loud and I really don't want to subject my camera to a whole bunch of sawdust so I'll show you the beginning but I'll show you what we end up with at the end fair enough alright so here we go now I'm going to try to keep this in the sheath as much as possible and I'm going to try to soften 
this these lines here and sand this down just a little bit I'm not gonna go too crazy I had to get out of the workshop the uh, the sawdust was getting a little bit ridiculous but I hogged off a bunch of material and finished a lot of the work with these little flap wheels and the drill and as you can see it's not as blocky as the original let me show you an original this one I haven't done anything to and you can see how it goes very abrupt it's very blocky not the most comfortable handle in the world not the worst but not the most comfortable and now we have it's very contoured you know it needs a little bit more sanding but I'm taking a break for the rest of the night I'll uh, start again on it soon get it all stripped then we can stain it <clears throat> and then it's on to the blade modifications so overall I'm pretty happy with it so far you know I, I uh, kind of rounded this whole this whole butt and I'm really happy with that that's gonna be awesome let me grab a piece of paracord here and just show you so there's our lanyard hole here's some paracord and and it fits right through see that goes right in perfect perfect and being copper it'll get a nice patina over time it'll look pretty sweet if it gets a green patina on it so I'm pretty happy so far yeah so I will bring you guys back when I go back out into the workshop and finish or go on to the next step so I went ahead I finished the sanding on the handle and I just used an oil based uh, stain like a cherry kind of give it this color and that's where we are right now now the next step is I'm going to apply some tongue oil tongue oil is a non-toxic um, food safe completely natural finish I like using it on a lot of my outdoor projects because it does preserve waterproof and like I said it's a completely safe finish so if some of it manages to somehow come off on my hands and then I handle food it's not a big deal that's why I use tongue oil okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put a quick coat of tongue oil on this and then it's got to dry and once it's um, set for several hours then I can come back and wipe off any excess another thing to mention about tongue oil or most oil finishes um, the cloth that you use to apply it you should dispose of that cloth in a way in a place because uh, what you want to watch out for is some of these oils will cause a spontaneous combustion to rags and or cloth so they recommend that you dispose them in a water filled container so just a little bit of a caution there if you've never done this so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this oil on there not a whole lot and just gonna rub it on it's pretty pretty straightforward <laughs> so just let everybody know yesterday the 14th September 14th it snowed here so winter I guess is officially here in Michigan it snowed and yeah not too happy about the snow but it's what I get for living in Michigan kind of a kind of a win-lose or whatever kind of proposition you might think okay all right 
So there it is with the tongue oil and we're just gonna, I'm gonna put this in the room right next to the furnace for my house since my furnace is now running it's that cold out in fact yeah it's cold out <laughs> I mean, we have snow so anyway I'm gonna put that in there uh, overnight and let this dry and then wipe off any excess tomorrow so I gave the oil finish a little over a week to go ahead and dry it's pretty dry uh, typically with tongue oil you can wait up to a month before it dries it does take a long time but I always think it's worth it but sitting in my furnace room with the furnace running this time of year it's good and hot no humidity dried within a week so then I took it out and right along the spine here all the way to the back I went ahead and I where everywhere that I sanded I went ahead and I painted that with some black paint that's just to keep it from rusting so that's pretty much it for the handle modification unless you want to go a step further now you could go ahead and you could wrap this handle with hockey tape or something like that just to give you a more of positive grip or you could take some homemade ranger bands these are ranger bands are just uh, rubber bands cut out of an old uh, bicycle inner tube and there's two different ways you can put them on here and I'm going to show you both ways real quick so the first way is you take bands that are about an inch long and we wiggle them on here one at a time to where they overlap each other so I'm going to go ahead and wiggle those on and I'll bring you back and show you what that looks like so slipping them on to where they overlap each other and this is what you get and it's a rubber grip it makes it very positive and the cool thing about this is if while you're in the field you need a ranger band either to help secure some gear or use one of these as fire tinder you can just slip it off the handle so that's one way of doing it another way is to cut a piece that's nice and long and slip it on here as one piece this is a little bit more difficult than doing these one at a time one at a time they go on pretty easy and they come off pretty easy I'm gonna get my finger underneath this one here okay and I just pulled that off sorry I bumped the camera but you can just pull those off and with two fingers both hands stretch this out you can put it right back on this I kind of prefer over a single piece but depending on the person you might want you know either or and I think that's going to do it for this segment this segment's already getting kind of long there's going to be another part where we go back out in the shop and we do the blade modifications so I hope you come back for that segment on our Tramatina 18 inch machete and uh, I'll see you then later out in the woods.